right, man, we're on the old live stream. We're going to take a look at these uh, notes that we have uh, for the from the forum here, because this is some pretty interesting reading here. Let me go ahead and program this in uh, really, really quick here. There we go. And so we can bring this thing up and uh, let's take a look at this and see what we got here. So let's check out what the old developer handbook has to say today. So let's see, last time through the first part of developer's handbook, we introduced the contents being prepared for the update at the end of August, and we would like to provide additional guidance on more detailed content as development progresses then. All right. In addition, we also, hello YouTube. In addition, we also get into the content that was introduced previously due to the fact that decisions were still being made. So direct link to developer's handbook part one. All right. Uh, so we're getting the new story mode. Big thumbs up, big thumbs up. The new story mode, that is awesome. And it's going to unlock normal, hard, and expert. Lots of sweet little rubies. So definitely, definitely good thing, guys. Kick ass, loving it, loving it. Then we have what's called Evolved Monsters. All right. So they mentioned a little bit of this in the last developer handbook. Overpower and new forms of damage. Enemies reinforced by the Phantom Gate appear, okay, at higher levels than before and have a defensive stat called Overpower. It has also been confirmed that the monsters can use new forms of damage through the Phantom Gate. So we have something called Cypher. To counter these stronger enemies, the tuners have analyzed the type of Trojan horses and new enemies in order to come up with new countering strategies. In addition to the new equipment plugin that can help narrow the gap with more powerful enemies, we have found vulnerabilities given to the enemy and modified them to combine them with the fighter data. So we're going to be able to put what's called plugins on our characters to allow us to do more damage or to give us advantages against specific bosses that have these phantom gates. So by attacking an enemy with a fighter that has Cypher, you can deal more damage to enemies vulnerable to this specific ability. And this is what they're talking about with Cypher. You see how this thing here looks here? You see how this looks here? So if a character has this, they're going to do a lot more damage against the character that has the same type of uh, stat right there, right? Okay. So new UE Ultimate Fighter. So we're getting a new rarity. I know some people are going to feel some kind of way about that, including myself. But I want to give the devs the benefit of the doubt and wait and see what we get in the update before I reach to any kind of judgment on a new rarity. But I got to say, initially, I didn't really like it. But let's read about it. Let's check it out. Because when you read about this a little bit, you'll see that it might not be as bad as what you actually think. Then again, it might suck. We'll have to wait and see. But UE stands for Ultimate. Right, so we're going from extreme to ultimate. Right, what is UE Great Fighter? I see some guys in my chat already don't like it, and then some do. Uh, it is a fighter endowed with new abilities developed by the tuners in order to counter the monsters that use the phantom effect, which appears based on the story of KOF 2003. Okay, so four characteristics of UA Great Fighters. So now you're going to have Awakened Tier 9 instead of Tier 7. We're going to go up to Tier 9. I definitely feel some kind of way about that. But, okay, we'll have to see just like, are they going to increase the amount of memories that we need to get? Or, or is it just increasing the amount of prime memories? So let's read a little bit further. So UE Great Fighters will appear with their maximum achievable level increased so that they can more easily deal with the stronger enemies. Along with that, the supply and demand for prime memories... And the difficulty for growing the existing Awakening tiers 1 to 7 will be eased considerably. Now, we'll have to see what that actually means. Uh, easing our pain. They've said this before about easing our pain. And the last time that they said this, it didn't help. It didn't help at all. It didn't really change anything at all. I mean, something to ease the pain would be, oh, I don't know increase the rates right i'm not i'm not trying to be greedy because we've gotten so much here lately we're getting all these rubies but you want to ease our pain that marble that's how you do it that's how you ease our pain or just you know give us more rubies i mean whichever the case may be and then we have phantom mode so ua great fighters have ue skills not ex skill ue skill so this could be a new thing that replaces current ex skills okay 
So it's probably going to be in the same place that our EX skills are at. They're called Phantom Awakening Skills. So PA or Pass, I guess we'll just call it Pass Skills, uh, which are improved awakening skills that can respond more effectively to the Trojan Horse. If you use the Phantom Awakening skill, you will enter Phantom Mode, and you can build up the Phantom Gauge through Battle for the Duration. In Phantom Mode, the UE skill changes to a Phantom UE skill. Interesting. So the skill's going to change depending on the game mode or whenever we're facing this game mode called Phantom Mode. And the Phantom UE skills activation effect gets more powerful according to the number of Phantom Gauges currently possessed. Okay, so the more Phantom UE skills applied, the more damage they're going to have, or the more damage we'll be able to do. We'll, have, we'll have see how that plays out. Depending on the situation, you'll be able to play more strategically by deciding whether to use EU, UE skills right away or enter the Phantom mode and use Phantom UE skills. So it looks like they're creating a game mode where we have to decide whether we want to use UE skills or whether we want to use pass or phantom UE skills, right? Or phantom gauge skills. It looks like that's what they're trying to do for us to figure out. Now, we're going to have to wait and see how this how, how this difficult level is, difficult level is actually going to be. I mean, it's interesting reading, I have to say. And then we have cipher element. Cipher element can exploit the weaknesses of the Trojan horse monsters. Monsters have five types of cipher weaknesses. Now this is just like, you know, like certain colors having uh, damage buffs and decreased damages over other colors. It's pretty much the same kind of thing, right? And then you have Phantom Stats. UE Great Fighters have certain momentum over power of Phantom Stats and can acquire more of these stats or enhanced through plug ins. All right, so on your UE Fighters, you can actually give them, I guess, apply plugins and give them more uh, stats like momentum, overpower, and phantom stats. Okay. And additional information on plugins. So uh, when I was reading this the first time, you know, because this is my second time actually reading this, I thought to myself, are the UE fighters the only ones that are going to have the plugins, right? Are they the only ones that are going to be or have the availability for this? Well, when you read here, the plugins tab addiction. Addition, in the case of the plugins mentioned in the previous developer's note part one, it has been added as equipment that can be equipped by fighters similarly to battle cards and imprint stones. Okay, so plugins are going to work just like our battle cards and imprint stones. But you see, the imprint stones cost to unequip them, cards don't. So, will it cost us to unequip a plugin, put it on another character, or will it not? We don't really know. We don't really know yet. And then as a result, the previously separate battle card and personal tabs will be integrated into one equipment tab and a plug-in tab will be added at the same time, okay? So plug-in equipment, plugins can be equipped by fighters of all grades. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Each fighter can equip a total of four types of plugins, and but UE fighters. Nice little interruption there from my buddy in the chat, Rogue One. Shout out to you, buddy. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, anyways, uh, each fighter can equip, uh, sorry, and UE grade fighters can equip one additional type. So your regular fighters that are non-UE can equip four plugins. Your UE fighters can equip five plugins in total, which is essentially going to give them more of an advantage. Regardless of the type of plugin, you can acquire it by playing the plugin plant. So another game mode that we're going to have to play, we're going to see how difficult this is actually going to be. And then they explain that there's a lot more details about plugins that they're going to have to go through and find out. And yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see, guys. And then ending developer's handbook. We have now illustrated all the content we have prepared so far. We will continue to listen to the opinions and contenders, blah, 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 blah. They're saying thank you. Great job, community. Right. And then lastly, as a new UE grade is added this time, we have prepared for the contenders to enjoy this content. And we have also prepared generous rewards so that you can acquire two types of UE grade fighters through the event, which hopefully you will enjoy. So event reward preview, special site, Awakening 5 tier UE grade fighter by one. So it looks like they're giving away a free UE fighter and then event play UE grade fighter by one. 
So it looks like we're getting a free UE fighter, right? I mean, we're going to have the Ruby login event where we're going to have... I mean, if you've been playing this game for the last three years, you're going to have 54,000 rubies from the returning Ruby login event. That is three pities, right? doesn't count the cards, but that's three pities, right, for free. And they've been recently giving us all these rubies. So the event's looking pretty awesome, guys, but I'm just not sure about the new rarity. I'm not really sure if the game really needs it, but... We're going to have to wait and see, you know, what entails in this, because if there is actual strategy, if there's actually good rewards in these new game modes, that's going to be the big thing, right? Are there going to be new good rewards in this? Because if not, this is really just a big bunch of power creep that the game really doesn't need and really doesn't solve the problems that the game is having as far as actually having some good new content. So let me know what y'all think about the developer's handbook. Now I do stream on Twitch at 9 p.m. GD plus 7 time. The link is in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one. See everybody. Take care.